Well, I'm sorry, everybody. My facial hair has not yet returned, but we do have a podcast today. You can look at the other two guys. We're breaking down the matchups. We've got starts of the week. We've got a forgettable boom, boom kicker and a whole lot more. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and try to enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Yeti time. Woo! I get it. Snow in Vermont. Sorry, I, I didn't give you space. Welcome into the show. It's all that matters tonight. It's all that matters. The Yeti? There is snow in Vermont. I, I love this time of year because we receive lots of pictures and, and notes on Twitter about the weather patterns in Vermont. And mm-hmm. yep. Shout out to, let's go, uh, Taito. Two seven four zero. We mm. got confirmation. Snow is on the ground in Vermont as of November first, and that is if, Yeti season is open. That, right. If you are uh, new to the fantasy footballers or you. don't have a long term memory mm-hmm. of <laughs> last year at this time and the year before, what we have found out through the scientific method is that <laughs> when it snows in Vermont, Derrick Henry goes bananas. He has a great game, and speaking he's going to have speaking of bananas, a banana oh, yeah. behind center. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, welcome in, everybody. That is, I mean, that's pretty much our method right there. It, yeah, it is. It's the Derek Henry snow model. Yes, trademarked. <laughs> trademarked. Um, well, it, we've got a lot today. We've got matchups to get into, starts of the week, NFL news to talk about. Jason's lifetime fandom of the... Um, <laughs> Of baseball is now over? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I your hate life, that. <laughs> your <laughs> life sucks. Your lifetime fandom <laughs> is, is over. I Perhaps too wholesome for this show, but the truth is is we are used to suffering in Arizona. We have now lost a Super Bowl, an NBA Finals, and a World Series in the last 15 years. I do actually try and fail to think of all the small children and happy people in the other stadium and the other city Mm -hmm. because they like the rangers had never they have never won a world series and they 1961 1961 so that's what i tried that's what i try to comfort myself (laughs) with but it didn't help my weeping son last night i'll tell you that all right we can move away from baseball now though permanently we can move uh to football and to the game we were just talking about a second ago and to our personal league of record waivers that just ran why Uh, are you Oh, because Will Levis was signed. Because not just signed. He was signed by my opponent this week to play against no. me tonight. Oh, oh my no. God. Yes, I'm, I, I am unexpectedly today rooting against Will Levis. That's so, just $3 what? for Will Levis. No. Yeah. They were, their team was in such dire straits. I think yeah, he had, they, they wow. had, he had uh, two quarterbacks on by. He's got Trevor Lawrence and Russell Wilson as his yeah. quarterbacks. All right. So do you? What's your reaction to finding out you're facing Banana Rama? So I think I'm happy. I think I'm happy, but I don't want him to Justin Herbert and just be an awesome rookie. And he's calling it early. So uh, the I mean, look, the matchup against the Steelers secondary yeah. is not a very difficult one this year. So found out Hopkins is playing. He's he's going to be out there. I am. Uh, I am super anti Banana Rama tonight. Yeah, Yeti time. All right. Um, Yeah, Mike is very pro (laughs) Yeti. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Josh Allen, good to go. Is that going to be the case? I mean, he didn't practice on Wednesday, but he's going to play. Yeah, against the Bengals, he says he's going to play. So, yes, he's good. That's good because my alternate in the dynasty is Taylor Heineke. Uh, Damian Pierce did not practice on Wednesday. Um, Devin Singletary by himself will would be very good. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. It It's just Wednesday, but 
Always keep an eye. We're out. seeing more of the rest days take form now. With I mean, every week now, Raheem Mostert is now not practicing on Wednesday. Every week, Deshaun Watson just doesn't really practice. He needs a lot of rest. I think he did actually veteran, practice yesterday. Though. He's taking a veteran weeks off. <laughs> Daniel Jones limited on in Wednesday's practice. Uh, he's going to be back out there. Darren Waller says it may be a little bit before he's able to return from the hamstring. It stinks, man. Yeah, it, I mean, this is a hamstring that's been bothering him for a year. They say it's you know some some it's related to the nerve. It's like different than a normal hamstring injury. If it's going to be a little bit, I wouldn't be surprised if before kickoff we hear that he gets added to the IR. Man, he, we were just heating up, too. We had three weeks of averaging nearly nine targets a game. That's pretty disappointing. Yeah, and uh, we have Aaron Jones with his hamstring limited practice on Wednesday, as was uh, Luke Musgrave limited. And P.J. Walker will start if Watson cannot play. Now, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe Watson practiced. Yes. Yeah, he practiced, I think, limited. I don't think he was a full participant. Yeah, I already saw a quote today that he, he says he's feeling better, but we still don't know if he's going to play, which that says to me that he probably won't. I, I saw a report uh, from Dr. Chow that uh, the injury he's dealing with could be an issue for up to six weeks. So, you know, all the jokes about his rest aside, he is – he is injured and dealing with, you know, a, a bum shoulder. So I as of this moment, I'm still expecting PJ Walker to start this week. Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon said um Kyler Murray's fired up to potentially play this week. I saw interviews with uh Drew Petzing. That's how you say it, right? Yeah. He said he was not going to reveal the starter for this week. They're doing the gamesmanship thing again. And James Connor, ready to go and excited to get back out on the field, could be back. In week 10. Yeah, next week would be... Because he was his, IR, right? Yeah. Next so week, he's healthy now, though. That's good news to hear the report that a week early he's ready to go. Yeah. Wait, and DeMarcado didn't practice? Uh-oh. Because of a toe injury. Also, Michael Wilson with a shoulder. But that's just a Wednesday. So we'll... That's just a Wednesday for Arizona. Yeah. So, that's a lot uh, of Arizona news. Uh-oh. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Uh, do you have some... Demarcado dependency, Mike. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be uh, uh, AJ real... AJ Dillon getting the call. Oh man. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it's week. Uh, what are we going into week nine, nine in fantasy oh, when your Dylan Demarcado <laughs> decision is taking Ooh. center stage. Fantasy Forecast. This week, the 49ers, Broncos, Lions, and Jaguars are on by. We got a lot of matchups to break down. It was the first week, like some of the teams that I have heading towards the playoffs. I did glance mm -hmm. at those playoff schedules with a little more attention. Yeah, this is also as a good reminder when you're when you're looking forward at the schedule. This is we're coming up against trade deadlines in a lot of leagues. You also want to look forward at your bye week schedule. Mm -hmm. Look forward at your matchups. If if you're in a position where you need to purchase wins, you know sometimes you can look at who you're playing next week, and you can be like, oh. I'm playing against this guy, and I've got this player on bye, and he's got that player coming off a of bye. Maybe I'll make a trade right now, and then next week, wham, it's a, a big swing in your matchup. We do have the Strength of Schedule tool available on jointhefoot.com or for supporters at jointhefoot.com. First matchup here, Miami 6-2 and two, taking on the 6-2 and two Kansas City Chiefs. This is fun. Uh, mm -hmm. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Kansas City minus one and a half. Over-under is 50 and a half. This is in Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah, home of uh, birthplace of the hot dog. I've act No. Is that really true? Yeah, Frankfurter. No way. Real. No yeah. way. Yeah, the word Frankfurter. It's just like Hamburg. The, yeah, the Germany word, is the, Hamburger. The word Frankfurter comes But that from, one's true? 
Comes from Frankfurt, Germany, where pork sausages similar to hot dogs originated. I have been to Frankfurt, Germany. Did you get a hot dog? And I did not get a Frankfurt. Oh, man. Wait a minute. You're telling me that hot dogs and hamburgers are German? <laughs> yeah. Like, these are American foods. Yeah. Have we, seen- we, have, we have taken over the, the hamburger hot dog world. But with that, that's that's wrong. There's a clip of Tom Holland, aka Spider Man, and he's defending his position of uh, like American food is not that good, and people are always like, "Well, yeah, it is." And he's like, "Okay, name me some American food," and they're like, "Hamburgers," and like, "Yeah, that's not that's, that's, Germ- that's it's German." German. He's like, "French fries." And he goes, mm, mm. <laughs> "Listen," <laughs> and you're wow. like, "Hey, pizza." <laughs> Turns no. out. Uh, I don't know what foods we actually created here. Maybe Not many. Cereal? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's our claim to fame. Anything with high fructose yeah. uh, corn syrup? Because we had the uh, we got a lot of corn. Yeah. All right. We're Back talking about to Germany. The Dolphins and Chiefs in Germany. Uh, Miami's offense. It's been great. Number one in points per game, yards per play. Kansas City's defense. Number two in points per game allowed. Number three in yards per play allowed. Thus far, when Miami has faced a test, they haven't been able to pass the test. No, that's right. I I believe they have not beaten a team with a winning record um, this season. They've had a, a schedule that has allowed for that, and this will be on American soil, Jason. Okay, thank you. Um, this will be a, a a real test. We've been we've been saying all year how good this Chiefs defense is, and how you need to not view it how we viewed it over the last several years where it was a great matchup. You know, sometimes you get so excited about an opposing offense mm-hmm. that you, you you love the matchup because you know, okay, the Dolphins are going to need to keep up. The truth is, this is a tough, tough team to play against right now. Uh, if you adjust for schedule, they're top five against quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers across the board. Teams are not doing well against the Chiefs. It really doesn't affect your start-sit decisions with players like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. I think our show yesterday, midseason review, we kind of slotted Tua in as a must-start player. Yep. Um, just because the yards per game and passing touchdowns and his production has been – it's been there. And it was nice last week. I think the matchup – like New England slowed him down in the past. He still had a good game. Raheem Mostert, he's going to be back out there. It's a tough matchup. He finds his way into the end zone like – we're starting all of our Dolphins. Yeah, I, I think because of the matchup, the only place where I am I am willing to just say, eh, I'm going to look elsewhere. If it was a good matchup, I think Jeff Wilson, uh, who you know uh, played enough snaps last week, and even Salvin Ahmed, like the 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 this is a this is a committee backfield. They they're not going to give Raheem Mostert 22 carries on the ground, and so I think in a good matchup, you can look at the other running backs against the Chiefs. I'm not doing that. So. It's it's pretty straightforward. Mostert, Tua, Tyreek, Waddle. You start, you, you don't, and then you're done with the Dolphins. Mahomes, Kelsey, of course. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco, you have to play in. The matchup's great. He, you know, it is frustrating at times uh, having Pacheco on your roster because the snap percentage fluctuates based on how these games are going. You know, only eight attempts last week on the ground shows you kind of where it was. You know, three catches for negative three yards. The the receptions have been there for the most part over the year. Fifty one reception pace. This matchup's not great. You hope that they're in the lead because if they're not, if they're if they're playing yes. from behind, you're going to get a lot of worthless McKinnon snaps. Although he did not practice, right? So maybe those are worthless oh. Clyde snaps. I don't know, but that's something to monitor. Maybe Pacheco stays out on the field a little bit more. Wide receiver wise, what's the evolution like in Kansas City? Where where are you looking for value? Uh, I'm looking for value in Rushy Rice. He has played his way more and more onto the field. You know, the beginning of the year he was having good games even with thirty percent of snaps, but we were really frustrated that he just didn't see enough time. Now, the last two weeks, he's been on the field sixty percent of snaps. And sixty percent of snaps while you've got a very nice targets per route run. You are very involved around the goal line. The opportunities are there for him. To me, in a matchup where you do still hope that the Dolphins can score on this Chiefs defense and keep up and make the passing game of the Chiefs have to, you know, uh, keep the pedal to the metal, 
I like Rashi Rice this week, and um, I'm I think. What he's... about Deontay tonight or Rashi Rice? Ooh, I'm gonna go with the upside, the touchdown upside of Rushy Rice. And then what about would that be the case with Josh Downs, Tank Dell, a couple other rookies? Yeah, I I lean personally Rushy Rice on 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 all of those. Has he... Tyreek had to play the Chiefs yet? Ever? Oh, is this the first time? Yeah, I I don't recall if they played last they year played. or not. There were some articles coming out about that situation. Kyle, I'll see if you can find it. Like they had made a pretty good offer. The Chiefs did to keep Tyreek. Yeah, he just wanted out. Uh no, he he wanted to stay. But oh. he just wanted more. He just want yeah, I think his his um right. agent kind of played a little chicken with them and they didn't you know, he ended up getting I think another 15 million guaranteed leaving so and uh no taxes no so, state tax. yes no, no state taxes. Yeah, yeah so they did not play last year so this would be the the first revenge that's kind of fun i All wish right. this was our thursday night game i wish it was in kansas city <laughs> i wish it was just not early on sunday morning we all have wishes <laughs> uh minnesota falcons both teams four and four atlanta minus four and a half on the DraftKings sportsbook over under 37 and a half What's your quick reaction to this uh, Heineke, Jaron Hall battle? Um, disappointment <laughs> that take that, the under. Ye, well, what do we got? Thirty-seven and a half. So Atlanta's favored by four and a half. It makes sense. It it the the Minnesota Vikings side is extremely difficult. Hawkinson is in for me. Uh, he's running such you know a lot of short routes. The tight end is not always the security blanket for young quarterbacks, but the way that they use Hawkinson, I think that he will be. Addison has been just such a good player. Where, What level of wide receiver do you need to sit him down? Yeah, I, I, the aforementioned Rashi Rice, I would play him over uh, Jordan wow. Addison personally. I, I, It's like kind of a puka situation right, to yeah. a degree where it's like, Addison's been very impressive, but some of these throws and catches, the rapport with Cousins was really good. Yeah, I mean, look, if you've got a bad quarterback that can't get you the ball well, it, it, you're, you're probably not going to have a touchdown in the game. And, you know, you'll end the game with enough targets. As, it, Addison is not a player that you have to say, I can't start him. Same with Puka. Like, you're going to start him, but your expectation needs to completely shift. And when you're looking at your start sit decisions, you need to see him as at best a flex option and you're expecting probably you know six to nine fantasy points and half ppr that's that's not shooting for the moon and and i i think the biggest problem here isn't really just the floor because these are nfl offenses they're going to have enough passes and receptions i the 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 issue is the ceiling there is almost no ceiling when you've got these backup quarterbacks in there you're you're not going to have a a great fantasy game. I agree, and and it's tough because the game plan for Minnesota is going to change. They have an implied point total of sixteen points in this game. So you you could you get lucky? Yeah, I mean it's possible. But Jaron Hall put up negative one point two fantasy points in relief last week, so the confidence level is minimal. Yeah, I mean, do you disagree, Mike? I mean, no, okay. I, no. I'm just I'm I'm stuck with it. Looking at names, it's like, would you play Michael Thomas against yeah, yeah, Chicago? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Christian Watson. Yeah, probably. Uh, uh, Rashid, maybe got Rashid Shahid off of the waiver wire. Probably. I think, yeah, I think I'd take the chance. I mean, both guys go, feel similar. I go yeah. to Addison in that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the level that, that you're looking at. And, and to speak now, to wasn't KJ Osborne limited a little bit in practice. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to speak to the, the under the Minnesota Vikings defense has been much improved yes it's worth realizing that the pace of play of Atlanta is very slow Minnesota has hit the under in seven of eight games and Atlanta has hit their under in six of eight games so I'm not expecting happiness in this matchup are you expecting hope for the pass catchers in Atlanta with Taylor Heineke taking over um, Kyle Pitts he had a couple of games that were better like I thought hey maybe I'll look at targeting him in some trades, and then I saw the snaps. I mean, he's not playing as much as John New Smith, and so even if you improve the, you know, quarterback situation a little bit, 
I mean, the, I don't have trust in that. The 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 downfield targets are what Kyle Pitts gets. They're very very valuable, but we've seen years of exceptionally bad targets, uncatchable targets. It hasn't been his fault. If you look at air yards, things like that, Kyle Pitts should be dominating. So on one hand, you could say, hey, this is a really important thing for Kyle Pitts specifically. Drake London, you know, has the groin issue. You need a downfield wide receiver. Kyle Pitts is basically playing kind of that wide receiver role. So there's a lot of optimism here, but I don't want to make Taylor Heineke something he isn't. Is he better than Marcus Mariota? Yes. Is he as good as a Derek Carr? No, he's not. He's a, you know, we. I think we often get too much hope in these like, oh, this quarterback will fix it. It's like, eh. it feels a little bit like the Winston to a degree. Sure. You know, Heineke is willing to challenge downfield. Drake London's health. What's that situation like right now? Oh, we just have a – he's the groin injury, did not practice on Wednesday. Okay. So, yeah, Because he missed the back half of the yes, game. Yeah, he, he would be on pretty high alert for me. Man, the more we talk about this game, the less I want to watch it. <laughs> I, I will say if Drake London plays, he should be a good start. I, I, obviously, you worry about the um, – the groin yeah, you know, re-aggravation, re-aggravation yeah. but um, he would be a, a decent start. I do think Kyle Pitts, you could throw him in there. You probably will if you've got him on your roster. And Bijan, you're going to start every week. Still waiting for that big one. Yeah, and it's probably not going to be this week. Arizona Cardinals, 1-7, and seven, taking on the 4-5 and five Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Cleveland, minus 8. Ooh. Over under 37.5, and, and the Cardinals have – well, let's just say that their line right now is um, – it screams Clayton Tune to me. Uh, 14.8 points. That's wild. Cleveland at almost 23. Whether it's P.J. Walker or Deshaun Watson, they're going to be playing from ahead. Usually when you don't know who the quarterback is going to be, the game lines are off. You can't bet. And they're like, yeah, it's no problem. It doesn't It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I think it's – they know. Yeah, they, they know. But I will say, obviously, if, if it turns out that Kyler was the quarterback, I think the line – would move significantly. You're right, Andy. This says that Clayton Toon is what the expectation uh, from the sports books are looking like. There's also a chance of rain, 15 mile an hour winds. So this isn't uh, this isn't set up to be a great passing game. Assuming Kyler doesn't play and Deshaun Watson doesn't play, I think you're going to have a lot of groundwork in this one. I, I I like Kareem Hunt a lot. He's been really solid the last three weeks. You've still got Jerome Ford coming off a high ankle sprain, but I even think you could play Jerome Ford. I, I know he wasn't good last week, but, I mean, you saw what the Gus bus did against the Cardinals. That's fair, and Amari Cooper has been getting tons of targets. He's been double-digit fantasy points two of the last three weeks, eight targets, eight targets, 11 targets. They're not the best targets. Catch percentage is pretty low considering who he is. If P.J. Walker's out there versus Watson, does it make a difference on your view of Cooper? Not really. I, I, I see Cooper as a decent play uh, with either guy. But, I mean, right now, if Deshaun Watson's there, I assume it's a bad version of Deshaun Watson, the way that he looked before leaving the yeah, last game. Right. What other decisions in this game are you looking at? Uh, so, Trey McBride and the wideouts for the Cardinals. I was going to throw out, so David Njoku, if Walker is the quarterback, I'm more willing to play him because the targets have the target share has been great from Walker, and we haven't seen that rapport yet with Watson. On the other side, um, I did I I don't know if I had said it out loud on the show, but it was of like, did something happen to Demarcado? And I was looking and looking, I could not find anything because he got, I mean, he got 20 carries. He was getting workhorse usage, and then in the second half, didn't like Keonta Ingram was the guy. He he didn't did, didn't get a touch until there was 40 seconds left in the third quarter, talking about Ingram, and then he played all but two fourth-quarter snaps. So I think there is a chance that DeMarcado is actually uh, is actually hurt. Uh, so that is – not that it, – look, it's a desperation play to to have DeMarcado in here regardless uh, against the Cleveland Browns with Clayton Toon. So you're hopefully you can avoid that, unlike my team currently. Trey McBride <laughs> – it's That's, the only way that you can play DeMarcado was knowing that he was going to get all the work. Yes. Because then he agreed. can volume his way to 8 to 10 points. So Trey McBride, 39% of the targets last week. Absolute domination for fantasy football. 
The matchup stinks. You probably have a late round rookie making his first start. Where are you at with Trey McBride? Like, are you going to play? Would you play Trey McBride or go back to Jake Ferguson against Philadelphia? I would definitely go Jake Ferguson. Trey McBride is a player I, I talked about. It. I want him on my roster. He was maybe my number one pickup this week, but that's for Kyler Murray. Uh, okay. I, I th you know, I think the next two weeks you're going to have Kyler Murray and no Zach Ertz, and you're going to have an opportunity for Trey McBride to be a real breakout star. This matchup, now, if it's Clayton Toon uh, against a really – I mean, right now on the season – 5.9 fantasy points per game to the tight end position. That's top three. That's what the Browns are doing. The Browns are at home. I Maybe you could PPR your way to, you know, he gets enough targets. I think it's okay, but I'm not trying to play Trey McBride this week, smash him in my lineup. Um, I do think bright, bright days ahead, but not How on bright? Sunday. Are they brighter than Dallas Goddard moving forward? Did I ask this yesterday? You did ask it yesterday. Okay. Is that one of those situations where you'd be trying to pick up Trey McBride if even if this week goes bad? Yeah, yeah. I, I want him on my bench this week. Um, and, again, you, he might PPR his way to, to something relevant if you don't want to roster two tight ends. But if there's another good one, um, I, I would grab him. All right, let's take a quick break and come back with the Rams and Packers. The Los Angeles Rams at 3-5 and five take on the 2-5 and five Green Bay Packers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Green Bay minus 3.5. The over-under is 38.5. You know, I a lot of these games this week are really, they're just not fun to work through. <laughs> it we feels can... like going through, this isn't like a, uh, a, a walk through a meadow. This is like a... Um, spooky forest a, yeah or a swamp a of, it's a swampish uh it, there's got to be some kind of dangerous animals you're either walking through a desert like whether you rodents, know there's a lot of snakes or the swamp and there's some gators rodents of unusual size sure <laughs> i mean it's not the rams they lost three of four and matthew stafford isn't practicing the packers but there was they've lost four in a row and they don't they never hit their implied point total so they don't even score we got uh i think some brief positive news for Matthew Stafford I thought I saw yesterday there was a report that they are now not considering IR for him okay and that they I mean I'm not expecting him to play I think it's Brett Rippon against the Green Bay Packers this week ripping but, it yeah can he rip it good probably, probably not, not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it, long term like that is it's that would be such good news for Puka and Cooper yeah, because it just it just feels a little bit dire there. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, Ian Harditz, who a great follow over on on X. He he shared. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. He shared the current landscape when it comes to the quarterback injuries. And I don't. know. Yeah, here we go. Aaron Rodgers, the Achilles. Cousins, the Achilles. Then uh, I can't even read you all their injuries because it'll take too long. But Richardson, Fields, Tannehill, yeah, Kyler, it's... Stafford, Deshaun Watson, Daniel Jones, Tyrod. Purdy, Goff, Lawrence on by this. Oh, okay, so those were all bye weeks, but you have all those injuries, and you have Purdy, Goff, Lawrence, and Russell Wilson mm -hmm. on by, and that's why Will Levis was just picked up. Yeah, to yeah. play tonight. It's, it's a oh, it's a brutal week. You will know that uh, from my quarterback start of the week because we try to find someone. Please. Yeah, it, it's tough, and in this matchup, again, when the quarterback position isn't you know, stable, you start to look at Daryl Henderson, right? He, I took a look at his numbers earlier this morning and, you know, he's not running well. He's sharing time. He, he has right. gotten into the end zone. Um, he's caught some passes. I, my confidence level on him is not very high with Brett Rippon at quarterback. Yeah. Roy I mean, 2.6 a carry last week, 3.4 the week before and and the defense is going to be able to stop that. Meanwhile, I, I, I don't know the, the situation of the, like, was the box heavy or not? I don't have those numbers in front of me, just the, the raw numbers. But Henderson, since, you know, the opportunity he's running at 3.1, he's the one getting far more carries, though. You know, we're at 30 attempts. And then the past two weeks, Royce Freeman is at uh, 21. But Royce Freeman 
his running at five point two. Like how Royce, how how much time does Daryl Henderson keep getting to be the lead ball the carrier when I Royce have. Freeman is on is statistically playing better? Now there's stuff that the coaches look for that we don't in fantasy football, but like Royce Freeman out snapped him last week. He yeah. had more snaps. Yeah, his snap. He had fifty three percent of snaps compared to forty seven for Daryl Henderson. I, I think the 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 difference here is that Daryl Henderson has been a little bit more involved in running routes and in the passing game. We don't know if Brett Ripien is there if he's going to pass to the running backs right. a lot or not. You know, Stafford utilizes them in that way. But I think you've you've got two different things. One, if you're if you're down uh, and you're running more routes, then you go towards the Henderson route on the goal line. We did see Royce Freeman uh, brought he, in there. Royce and, is a beef boy. Yeah, he's a beef boy. And so maybe touchdowns lean more towards Freeman. Receptions lean more towards Henderson. Touchdowns I don't think are going to be a, a ton to go around in this game. So I, I lean towards Henderson in this matchup. Yeah, I'm definitely on the Henderson side of who I'd start. It's just a matter of – it just makes me sad because I think the ceiling – like you talked about with Addison, I think the ceiling gets – kind of taken away for Daryl Henderson unless you lock into a couple of touchdowns. Nice thing is the Packers are not good at stopping the run. They are 26th right now in schedule adjusted fantasy points given up to running backs. Jordan Love, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs. Mm -hmm. You could do better. Could You could do worse. You could do worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Romeo Dobbs got back into the end zone the last Dude, couple weeks. He's but, a touchdown machine. Yeah, but they're just – Oh, and the yardage is not there. He's just catching – this is like uh, – it's, it's Give like me the, Rashi Rice, that's for sure. It's the ghost of uh, James Jones. Yeah, it, it's Nothing been, but touchdowns. It's been rough. Like, Jordan Lover, Will Levis, I think it's a fair conversation. Oh, man, that is a fair conversation. I think – because the Rams have been you pretty go, good. Yeah, I, I think you go Will Levis over Jordan Love right now. Jordan Love has just looked like he don't have it. Yeah, yeah. And then Christian Watson, he ends up being one of the most disappointing busts in fantasy this year. Well, yeah, when you start the first month injured, you come back, you get excited, you, you, you still deal with some of the injury, and you're not getting it done. He had eight targets last week. He's playing – uh, 80 plus percent of the snaps and it just hasn't resulted in actual yardage and touchdowns 27 yards two weeks ago 33 yards this last week I still think you can actually put him in a lineup I'm not I'm not like too scared to do that because he is the type of player one touch. that exactly he j you just need one big touch from a guy he's on the field enough getting enough targets like the behind the scenes numbers are there so and his athleticism is there, I you know I'm not like oh you gotta you know right. throw him in your lineup for sure. But Hollywood with Clayton Tune or Christian Watson in this matchup? Oh, I think I go Christian Watson just because of how good the Browns are. You playing is Hollywood in in your league of record team? I probably am. <laughs> we have like eight players to decide four spots, and it's. Oh, it's not easy. Have you seen that sleepers updated their matchup pages now to include like they show your average points per week and they show your start set accuracy? Ooh, no. And so I have, yeah. On the actual like slides when you look at the matchups it'll be like you know, 83.5% start set accuracy, averaging 117 points a week. Their maximum would have been 139 a week had you played it right. Yeah, that's fun. That's kind of cool. Where are we with Aaron Jones? We are not in a good place. <laughs> okay. Snaps, uh, the, I mean, we've only had him back for two weeks. The snaps did go up from 36 to 51%. The we haven't had him back. The opportunity, I'm saying. No, we, I know. We, but, we got him more, but the opportunities actually went from 13 to 12. He, five targets in each of the last two games. So we that's that's a nice PPR floor. But it is, it's a full timeshare with him and A.J. Dillon right now. And Lafleur's quote is, have to be smart with Jones because he isn't 100% by any stretch. Yeah, and he doesn't look 100%. Uh, that being said, I mean, he played more snaps this last week, uh, more snap percentage than yeah. he did in week one when he was the running back one. So you don't expect Aaron Jones to be a 70% snap player. He's going to be in a timeshare. You just are waiting 
for him to get his juice back, to get healthy. This matchup isn't good. I, I certainly, I mean, if I had Daryl Henderson or Aaron Jones, there's no question I'm playing Aaron Jones, but you are waiting. It doesn't look good right now. The Commanders at 3-5 and five take on the 2-6 and six Patriots. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, New England minus 3, over-unders 40 and a half. Sam Howell, like I said in yesterday's midseason review episode, 4,500 yards, 28 passing touchdowns. That's the pace, along with taking a sack every play. Um, Mac Jones, you know, you get an opportunity with Mac Jones here. He's uh, been better. Where, you know, I like New England in this game. They're favored. The defense has been uh, had a couple of their best linemen uh, sent off. And, you know, they're giving up a ton of fantasy points, Washington is, to quarterbacks and wide receivers. On paper, there's an opportunity. Now, one of the problems with Mac Jones and starting Mac Jones is that he doesn't have elite weapons. Kendrick Bourne was arguably the best one he had. Torres ACL last week, was getting into the end zone regularly. You get your shot. Demario Douglas gets his chance here in this game. Juju's back. Still underutilized. That's my worry is this, uh, that we're going to say, hey, this is an amazing opportunity, but no one can take advantage of it. Yeah. That's there, my concern. And and I would echo all your concerns. Uh, totally get it. But the like this particular week is I mean, it's this kind of this. Yeah, Will Levis has Hopkins for tonight, but he's still, I mean, he's a rookie making his second start against Mike Tomlin. And even though the matchup, like the Steelers haven't been great against quarterbacks and wide receivers, it, the, the my point being, you can go across the entire NFL and basically all the options that aren't, you know, those those locked in top six quarters we talked about, you can poke holes in every, in every single one of them. And the the thing that stands out here is over the last six weeks, Washington dead last against fantasy quarterbacks and... Sweat and Young are no longer on that defensive line. Yeah, it, it is a pretty good matchup. I'm not in love with Mac Jones, but I am kind of in love with Pop Douglas. Uh, dirty Pop. Dirty Pop. D Demario Douglas has been good. Um, he has a 25% targets per route run on the season and now is in a matchup that should be very exploitable in a time where his snaps should be the highest this week that they've been on the entire season. So if you're in a half PPR, full PPR, I'm fine playing playing pop. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the matchup's great. You mentioned it. Ramondre, uh, very disappointing last week. This week, I feel like Ramondre and Zeke are both in play. I agree. I think uh, you have a game that profiles as a chance that New England's ahead. They're at home. The defense has been pretty good statistically. Uh, I know there's a lot of weapons on the other side that we'd love to see get involved fantasy-wise with Dodson and McLaurin and Logan Thomas and, and such, but um, I do think that Zeke and Ramondre will have opportunities. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think you could start either one of them, uh, and even though the, the Manders' rushing defense has been middle of the pack, they got rid of two of their defensive lines, so TBD. Are you chasing... The last two weeks of Jahan Dotson. I think this is going to be one of your bigger start-sit decisions. Maybe even people deciding between two guys they picked up this this past waivers, which would be Dotson and Demario Douglas. Yeah, I think you could start either. I would rather start Demario Douglas. Um, if I had both on my roster, Pop would be in my lineup. Interesting. Okay. that It's so hard because like, Dotson's, Dotson's story, the movie this year, you know, he's in almost every scene. Yeah. You know, he's he's always on the field. You just don't know it. He's that good of an actor. It's, he's in the background in costume. Yeah, I, and, like, every time he goes to talk, they, the scene cuts away. It cuts to another. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes he fumbles the line. But, yeah, I mean, I think both I would, guys will probably be out there quite a bit this week. Uh, assuming that Curtis Samuel will be out, which I don't know if we have that information just yet, but if he is out, I would, I'm would i going to play Dotson. I know that Dotson's good. Demario Douglas has an incredible opportunity, but he's a you know six round rookie. I'll take the I'll take the guy who I've seen it. Before. And I, I'm going to throw Jamison Crowder's name out there because last week Jamison Crowder 
scored it's, seven it's, touch seven receptions and when you have the offensive line situation there's a reason like Curtis Samuel was was producing right and there's a reason Jameson Crowder did it on limited snaps last week and it's, it's because so wild. it's because Sam Howell is running for his life and there's a reason John Dotson's situations don't develop down the field it's because he's running for his life there's a reason Logan Thomas is getting targets it's because the underneath stuff is what you have to let the ball go to when you are almost on your back. So I'm just saying I don't think I'd be shocked if Jameson Crowder had a productive game without Curtis Samuel. Gotcha. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I think if you're in a redraft league, harder to throw him in your lineup. If you're getting value in DraftKings or something, that makes sense. He's probably 3,200. Um, I, I really like Logan Thomas for all the reasons you just laid out. Mm -hmm. You expect him to have seven plus targets in this matchup. And, um, you know, especially if Curtis Samuel's out. Yep. Absolutely. Anybody else from this matchup that you would like to discuss well, Brian Robinson? Yeah. Uh, you got to discuss Brian Robinson. It's not a, it's a middle of the road matchup, um, for the, the Manders and Robinson or Henderson. Henderson. I'm going to take the matchup. Robinson or Najee tonight? Robinson. I, I, I have a strict policy there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, this is this question's not for Andy. Yeah. Uh, well, I still answered as Andy would have. Yes, you did. Uh, You're welcome aboard. This policy, really easy to adopt, easy to execute. Been very successful. Almost works all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I think in a in a real good plus matchup, I'm still fine with Najee. Uh, we saw that, um, was it last week or? or uh, two weeks. Two the, weeks. The Texans. Yeah, game. exactly. Um, against the Titans, not so much. Uh, Chicago Bears, two and six, take on the four and four New Orleans Saints. Somehow it feels like every matchup is between losing teams, which isn't, it shouldn't be possible. No. But the Bears, two and six, Saints four and four. That's kind of the peak record wise today. Uh DraftKings Sports Book line, New Orleans minus eight and a half. The over under's forty one. Um the Saints are running a ton of plays per game. Bears games lately, you know, they're hitting the over. Maybe this game will be more exciting. Tyson Bagent will start. Bilbo. Yeah, Bilbo will get the opportunity. And Derek Carr. Somehow, some way, four consecutive top fifteen games. He's an angry car, which now. only Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, and Carr have done. And it wait, makes wait, what mm -hmm. it makes sense because if you really think about what he has at his disposal, Camara mm -hmm. over the last four weeks. Okay, yes. this okay. is what I'm saying. Um, Camara, Olave. Michael Thomas, Rashid Shahid is a deep threat that generally comes down with one every single game. And if it's more than one, it's a great game. And then even like, you know, Taysom Hill's involvement and Juwan Johnson coming back, like on paper, like I'm not shocked New Orleans eight and a half point favorites in this one. They should, th there's no way Chicago can keep up offensively. I think it'll be a repeat of what we saw with the Chargers and the Bears last week. I would agree. I, I think, and, and they're, they're not able to run the ball very well. Everything to Kamara has been a been a pass, and so that goes to Derek Carr's stats. Now, um, against the Chicago Bears, you pretty much want to target them. You want to put those players in. So obviously Kamara's in. Obviously Olave's in. I think Michael Thomas should be fine. He's he's been a first read target pretty much the entire first half <laughs> of every right. game. It seems. Yep. Um, Oh man, he, I don't. I unless I was a heavy favorite, I don't want to play him. You don't want to play Michael Thomas? No, I don't. Because the, the continuity with Rashid Shahid has been there. Getting Juwan Johnson back, Kamara's involvement in the passing game. Like, I feel like Michael Thomas is sitting here and he's like, "I will give you between eight and nine points." Yeah, that's and that, he's just like, that's and exactly I promise right. you, I will get you. So if I'm a favorite, I love it. But if I'm not, if, like I'd play Demario Douglas for the upside. Sure. If I was in a neutral or negative matchup, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean it. It's funny because you know he hasn't scored fewer than seven fantasy points all really? year. Yeah, perfect. Like like seven is a decent. You know, it's that's not that's, something you're looking for. But that's a sturdy floor. Yeah, to 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 say that we're going into week nine and he hasn't scored at wide receiver that, fewer than seven concrete. fantasy points. 
Also, he hasn't scored more than 11 wow. fantasy points. He is, he's got his window. And if you want right around 10 points, what are those? Nine, right around nine points. This is the restaurant that has the meal that's just like, it's, it's, it's the one you get and it's yeah. probably okay. But you know what you're getting. And like, because we are, we're not, uh, big city folk here in uh, we're not in in phoenix arizona very suburban uh what are the in in the cities where it's like the sub basement there's the one or like there's apartment buildings but you have to go down but the roof is very very low on you hmm. these are always i see them when they're renovating on uh on the you're on the saying TV when you, you take the stairs down yeah to get into because, that apartment because it's it's a basement but it's not a mm. full basement mm. it's like half a if basement. you want to make cool. a real stretched cool. like kind of analogy you really yeah. got to know what you're talking yeah. about that's i was trying to throw it out because we have a lot of people a lot in this of room. people in this room that don't a lot of people know not chiming what you're in. talking about well that's because we are all real lost yeah all right. It sounds, yeah. sounds Twitter, pretty Twitter will cool. help me out here. Sounds pretty there's, cool. So there's a type of building that's not a basement. But it's got but it's a, a little low below ground. ceiling. Is that what you're saying? Yep. So you're just saying that the ceiling is low. I see yep. Deucer's Alley desperate to not be talked to right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. And we, we're we a pretty big city, Mike. We're the fifth largest city. Yeah, but we're suburbs. So... Andy, yes. asking for a friend. Yeah, yeah let's a move on. Asking for a friend. I am favored pretty heavily. If Will Levis goes out and puts up a stinker tonight, mm -hmm. do you think I should start Michael Thomas yeah. in my matchup? Well, it depends on your alternative. Who's your alternative? Oh, man. Hollywood? I too many. I would start him over Hollywood with Toon. Yeah, that's what, that yeah, would because, be one of them. Because there's a chance Hollywood catches zero passes with Toon. Puka. Yeah, I'd play Michael Thomas. Crazy. Michael Thomas is automatically putting seven points in your lineup. Josh Downs. No, I'd play Downs. Yeah, Downs is more explosive. Okay. Michael Thomas has lost all of that. And he may never he may never have had it. Like Michael Thomas was just He had to have more than he has now. He had to. He was he was a That's true, but he never really he never made his money on explosive plays. He made it on on Drew Brees and and that kind of he, he was Drew Brees' is Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Which was like, he knows where to be. And he misses Drew Brees, and he, he says a little prayer, wishing he'd come back every night. Is this the week Olave breaks out? Maybe. We say every week. No, it might be. I, I, I'm i actually really sad because I've tried to get him, and the people are not down on him enough. That's that's good. I they, expected they should them for to me be. to get him cheap. Correct. <laughs> Yes, that is. I did. Don't you know who you've been playing? You're now not, just give them to my team. You're not veiling anything here. That is exactly right. I expected people to be more crestfallen. Yeah, and they're not. And Olave is probably going to break out very soon. He's one of the one of the few players that have the level of targets that he has with only one touchdown. And and also his floor uh, to speak to Michael Thomas's consistency. It's higher than you think. He only has one game with fewer than seven fantasy points. He's been okay. He's just not being a superstar because he's not getting the touchdowns. They will come. Rashid Shahid is the inverse play of Michael Thomas. If you are a massive underdog, you are not playing Michael Thomas. You're playing Rashid Shahid because he could have 174 yards and two touchdowns. Um, that's my. I mean, that's my take on that. Is is underdog Shahid favorites Thomas Taysom Hill? Yes. Derek Carr? Yes. Kamara? Of course. And now we're onto the Bears, uh, Mike. I'm gonna hand you this All right. beautiful platter oh, to talk about. So yeah. easy. I mean, it is easy. It is uh you bench all running backs. Mm -hmm. Yep. The if you got the Deonta Foreman week, cherish it, hold it in high esteem. It's done. Uh that was it was, <laughs> it was third it is a mess for a bad team. Thirty two. They just fired the running back coach. You see yeah, that? Uh yes. I think it was a off the field situation, if I recall correctly. Gotcha. Uh, but Deonta Foreman, 32% of the snaps. Roshan, 36. The combo of uh, Travis Homer. Wait, of who had the 27%? Was it? Was Darrington it? scored last week. Yes, he yeah, did. He score. had 27%. So he had 27%. So, like that, that uh, either Homer or Evans. But the point being, it's three players for a team that's not going to score a lot of points against a very strong defense. So, uh, abandon all hope. And then DJ Moore, I'm st I'm still going to play him. Uh, DJ Moore or Amari Cooper rest of the season? Cooper. Um, 
Man. Yeah. No, I changed. DJ Moore. DJ Moore, DJ Moore or Hollywood rest of the season? Stop it. Stop uh, making good questions uh, that are hard. Yeah, I think Hollywood's go going to be good when Kyler comes back. Do we have any updates on Fields? Uh, we, we, I heard he's still week to week was the last I Week to seen. week, and we know pretty early on that he's not playing this week. So I, I would imagine it's it's going to keep going. I think we're going to be without him a little bit longer. And, and, then, I, and then Cole Komet, I mean, what, 10 for 79 last week? I mean, that's – that's that's not too shabby. Yeah, Bajent was, was checking it down. That was against the Chargers, but I mean the the previous game of Bajent was a grand total of zero for zero for Cole. I, I would expect it to be far more like that this week. The, the zero Saints, for zero. The Saints are good. The Chargers are bad against tight ends. The Saints are good against tight ends. I think he'll look elsewhere. DJ Moore should have around ten fantasy points, and then you check out on of the Bears. Seahawks are five and two, taking on the six and two Ravens. Yay! DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus six. The over-under is 44. Oh, wait. Oh, ooh, ooh. oh the ball, the, your, your, your uh, hatred for the Ravens is going to continue to flow? Uh, that's what people think. I. That's only because you'll say only negative things about the Ravens. No, well. it's just because they're, they're favored too often. <laughs> they're six and two. They're favored too often by too much. What are you gonna do? You got to make your decision <laughs> here. This six and two team is favored too much. I look. I, I don't find anything wrong with what I'm doing. They, they I they uh, were hey. they were favored too much against Pittsburgh when I took Pittsburgh to cover, and they did. And they last week okay. against the Cardinals, they were heavily favored, and they okay by by too many points. <laughs> when you're saying they're favored too much, it sounds like we're predicting the Ravens are going to win the games too many times. This is not an almost upset. I'm not going to okay. take it. I'm not going right. to take it. I, I, I'm on the – six seems like a lot. But um, the Baltimore defense is really, really good, and they're at home. Uh, they control the game. The offense for Seattle has been weird on some levels. I mean, they are they're fighting, and they added, you know, a huge piece to their to their defense. Leonard Williams. Yeah, and so – Welcome aboard. Their run game will be better. Much better. Run so, stopping game. Yeah, and and so you know, is this a complicated game? Zay Flowers is Zay Flowers is reaching the point now where I do not consider him an auto start. An auto start at all. Like he he's more like, I think he's just like purple Wandale. He, <laughs> I mean, he yeah. he's like maybe closer to that than he is a superstar. Yeah, I I, I would agree. Um, Which I I'm not. I don't hate the Ravens. I'm sorry. These are the numbers. They are, they are utilizing Zay Flowers in a very curious fashion. Yeah, I mean, it, and you it, don't play Bateman or Beckham because the targets aren't aren't correct. there. Yeah, are are you going to stay in the flames with Gus Edwards? Last week, obviously, was an advantage over the Arizona Cardinals. Um, this week, you've got what on the season has been a middle of the pack run defense, uh, but they add Leonard Williams. The Gus Edwards is currently. Uh, playing a little bit more and more, but still around fifty percent of snaps. Twenty-one opportunities last week. Are you putting favorite at home? Line? I'm in. Okay, I'm in. I'm uh, I'm gonna live the live with that decision. Life. Yeah. Kenneth Walker, forty-one percent of snaps last week. It was our first uh, disappointing game. Yep. Well, let's, we'll follow him on the injury report. Although, I it's hard to find someone you would play over Kenneth Walker, even if you're a little worried about he's hurt. Charbonnet, is he in flex consideration this week against a, a brutally difficult defense? I don't think so. I, I think there are are better options at flex at wide receiver than having Charbonnet in there. He looked great last week, 53 yards on only five carries, but only five carries. Like it's just not enough to do, you know, to so be fantasy nay, relevant. Nay on Charbonnet. Correct. Not not if Walker's playing. Metcalf, Lockett, JSN. JSN, uh, two touchdowns in two weeks, which sixteen targets over the last three games. Yeah, four last week. Got into the end zone, but three for thirty six. It's a little bit, a little bit scary in this one. I think I'm, I'm trying to bench him. I am not starting him against the Baltimore Ravens. Their defense is great. They're on the road. Um, too too low a floor. And Geno Smith, we're going to sit him down. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about the the difficult other options. This week isn't a great week, so you might not be able to. Might not have someone you like more, but I would. Will rather... Levis or Geno Smith? Geno. Geno. 
Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Uh, in the last three games, three interceptions, two turnovers on downs inside the red zone. They cannot punch it in lately. Nice to see Lockett finally have a game last week. It seemed like we needed that to, to yes. have any confidence that he exists. Yes. But nine targets, eight for 81, and a touchdown, that's a that's a good week. And if they're playing from behind, then maybe you – even if they lose, maybe that's garbage time production. Metcalf full practice. He's not been good. I've seen him on benches. Some teams have like had to, you know, through waiver wire, you've picked up some other players. Are you playing DK Metcalf? Fourteen targets. Yeah, I'm. I'm playing Metcalf. Are you over, playing like you know over the Rashi? No, and stuff? no, I, I'm playing Metcalf. Uh, obviously, last week didn't turn out well, but fourteen targets. He's Man. DK Metcalf. He's practicing in full now. I he is DK Metcalf, but you realize his yeah. highest finish of the year is wide receiver twenty one. Yeah, yeah, it's a disappointing, but that's not going to stay the same. Feels a little bit like Olave. Like both of those players are yeah. probably going to have. And the, I mean, the first month he was, it was still over ten points a game for in a half point scoring format. But that's, man, that's that's that stinks. Come on, Seattle. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. All right, it's a dirty week. Time to get into the starts. I am going to go with Dak Prescott yes. on the road. Yes, please. Love it. Against Philadelphia. These are going to get progressively worse. <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, they are. <laughs> his last three games against Philly, he has not had fewer than three touchdowns. 347 and three, 295 and five, 238 and three. And, you know, it's one of those games where you just trust that both offenses are going to get into the end zone, despite the fact the defenses are good. It also, you know, could be a struggle on the ground, so both quarterbacks are going to have to throw the ball. I'm excited about the potential this week, and I think they play again. Don't they play again soon? Or am I, did they already play them this year? Dallas and the Eagles? Yeah, I'm trying I to – I think the, the other I might one's be, coming up. I might be misremembering. I thought they had a couple – No, in week 14. Okay, yeah, I, I, they've got a couple of these. Uh, that one will be at home, obviously, but I'm going to go with Dak. Yeah, I, I love the DAC start this week. If you are struggling and you need a middle-tier quarterback that you can start, we talked about it on today's episode, Derek Carr is my start of the week. You can send in the car. Send in the car. Send in the car. Car. Over the last month, Carr and the Saints have had a very high floor passing the ball. They are averaging 287 passing yards per game. That is the fourth most in the NFL during that time. And the Bears have allowed the second most passing yards in the NFL fifth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. I think Carr is a is a fine play in a bad week. Titanium underpants. You're going to need some protection for this particular start. It is Mac Jones. And this is, look, some of it is Mac Jones playing better because he is, over the last three weeks, he's completing 74% of his passes. Pour one out for Kendrick Bourne. That stinks. But two passing touchdowns in back-to-back -back games, and it's all about the commanders. From worse to even worser, they were already allowing the third highest yards per attempt, and those two superstars are gone. I think that in this particular week, I hope you don't have to, but if you're desperate, I think that Mac Jones can give you at least a passable fantasy game. All right, my, <laughs> my running back. You know, there was a time when under, titanium underpants, steel underpants were required. But I don't think they're required no, anymore. No, no, Zach no. Moss. You may, you may not need any underpants at all. You could go completely you, nude. You, you, I was going to say commando, but all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No <laughs> underpants, Don, no pants. Donald Duckett. Um, he's not going away. He's the RB7 in points per game. He's got He's been a top 24 guy in all but one matchup, and he plays Carolina. It's absolutely crazy. He leads all running backs – not named Devon A. Chan, in rushing yards per game. That's more than Saquon and McCaffrey and Montgomery and Henry. And there's there was no world where that seemed possible. You play him against Carolina, 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to running backs. I don't know if Jonathan Taylor's hurt or not. Uh, he says he's not. He was doing toe races. It doesn't matter if he's – I mean, they were willing – if he's not hurt, they were willing to give Zach Moss the second half. If he is hurt, yeah, this is a Zach point. Moss is going to be fine. So play him. Is Ursay getting? Is he like happy 
when these things are happening. What a weird revenge that would be. Or, Here's all this money, but you're also not playing. <laughs> Man, Zach Moss has been so good. I, <laughs> I, I got into the dock first, and I wanted to make Zach Moss my start of the week. But you're a man of high character. Yeah. And I also knew if I did, if I finally went in, I would I would curse him. <laughs> uh, the injury report so far for the Indianapolis Colts does not have Jonathan Taylor on it this week, so that does scare me a little bit. But if it if this week Jonathan Taylor practices in full and it's still 50-50, then congrats, Zach Moss managers. Uh, my start of the week at running back is Kareem Hunt. I'm, I'm rolling with it again from last week. Worked out well despite Jerome Ford's miraculous returning from a high ankle sprain. Uh, Hunt saw 15 opportunities. The last three weeks, he's been the running back 10, 11, and 16. He's just a solid running back. Even in an RBBC, he will have enough opportunities to beat the Arizona Cardinals at home in a highly favored game. Arizona last week, they went, they laid down in the middle of the road, and they mm. let the Gus bus just drive all over them. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, the Cardinals, they're 28th in schedule adjusted fantasy points, the highest rate of rushing first downs in the NFL. Kareem Hunt should be an easy play. And I'm going to go back to Chuba Hubbard because this time it will work for sure. 67% of the snaps last week. There was only two touches for Miles Sanders. And this is the best matchup for running backs since week four. And the Colts, not only are they giving us a good matchup, but pace of play. They go, they, they play fast. So we get a whole bunch of more opportunities. A lot, they've allowed 15 rushing touchdowns. That's the most in the NFL. And Chuba, despite last week, is number one in running backs in rush success rate. He's been playing very, very well this year. T. Higgins against Buffalo, my wide receiver oh, start of the week. Baby. Coming oh, off the bye. Oh, baby. Came back to life a little bit against San Francisco. You know, the matchup is Buffalo, who has been quietly destroyed through the air since the injuries they suffered. 29th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to wideouts and must start a confidence play somebody that might carry you this week t higgins yeah i, I love higgins this week uh at at uh, wide receiver for me my start of the week is going to be rushy rice i believe he's on a lot of benches i think he should be in flex consideration as a starter this week you might not want to miss him in a game against the Dolphins. If the Dolphins can score and keep up, Rushy Rice could have a breakout game. They, there's a 15.5 point over under. Rice has actually been the wide receiver 23 over the last month. He's up to 60% of Kansas City Chiefs snaps. He's being targeted on 26% of his routes, which is a great number. Four plus receptions in four straight weeks. He's had a reception of 15 plus yards in seven of eight games and since week three, the Dolphins are schedule adjusted 29th against wide receivers. So the he's matchup got, is there. The snaps are starting to be there. The quarterback is there. Yeah, he's got that fluidity out there. You know, when he gets the ball in his hands, uh, really good after the catch. You definitely see elite talent in that regard. I'm going Nico Collins. Oh, we're coming back. Red light, green light all year long. And we're on a green light week, everybody. Stunning analysis. But the reason is he's home. Versus the Bucks, which has actually been the third best matchup of the last month. Uh, he is averaging seven targets a week, 12.1 average depth of target. Those are those are juicy, juicy numbers. And he still ranks top five in qualifying wide receivers and yards per route run. I think this is a bounce back week for Nico. Taysom Hill against Chicago is my tight end start of the week. Taysom keeps doing Taysom things. He, he does. Tight end nine, five, and one the last three weeks. It doesn't always come the same way it's sometimes the running game sometimes the passing game sometimes he shouldn't be out there but he is and uh <laughs> you know the saints this is crazy guys 17 and one when Taysom Hill has seven Taysom Hill has seven or more carries <laughs> 17 and one wow. causation or correlation who knows who knows who knows <laughs> um at tight end start of the week for me this week it's going to be a monstrous week for Dalton Kincaid I absolutely love this matchup and love Wait, what, what we're seeing. Dalton Kincaid, rookie tight end. I thought you were a man of high for character. For the Buffalo Bills. I am. Uh, Dalton Kincaid's great. I, uh, Dalton Kincaid is a great player. Uh, you know, we said, I said early. We said, I said. You said, we said, <laughs> I said, you said. Uh, early on in draft season that rookie tight ends are going to have good games, not necessarily be a good pick for the season. 
Um, this is going to be a great game. With when Dawson Knox went down, all of a sudden the Bills, because they're good, well-run, uh, you know, organization, they changed their scheme. They basically abandoned twelve personnel and went with the players they have. And Kincaid shot up to eighty-four percent of snaps. He was five for sixty-one in a touchdown on Thursday night. His thirty-nine routes were the fourth most among uh, amongst tight ends last week. And the Bengals are dead last. They are the best matchup so far on the season adjusted for schedule against tight ends. It's an exploitable matchup where he's going to be on the field all the time. Kincaid is a smash play this week. No um, question. I'm, I, I'm still kind of targeting him. Kincaid? In trade. Absolutely. Yeah. With Knox out of the way, now he can be what people thought he would be to start the season. Going with Logan Thomas, it is not a sexy pick, but he's had a 17% target share over the last month. And the Pats, well, they've actually been the fourth best matchup for tight ends over that time period. Thomas is sitting at tight end seven in fantasy points per game. We're talking four receptions a game and and a lot of routes. The fourth most routes run per game uh, amongst tight ends. So he's out there getting opportunity, and Washington is going to have to sling the ball a little bit more. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides a fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. One more very important, well, questionably important segment. <laughs> Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, we went on trial. The judge tricked me. <clears throat> Jailed by the magistrate, the inmates tried to seal my fate by ganging up and flinging their poopy. <laughs> but like Bane to Batman, I shattered a back, man. And there crumbled the saints, Blake Groupie. Yeah, I rhymed poopy. One of my favorites. He also rhymed man with man. One of my favorites as well. Yeah. Mike, any thoughts? Any commentary? I'm, I'm just going to let that one I'm sit there. I'm out of words for uh, this one. For, right. for the record, uh, Blake Groupie, whose back I just broke. Yeah. Yeah. He weighs in at 156 pounds. So. Wow. What? That's an easy back to break. Yeah. Lightest kicker in the NFL over the last 35 years. That's the kind of research you're looking for. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, That'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Goodness gracious. Thank you for joining us. You can check out DFSPass.com if you're going to play some DFS this weekend. Tomorrow, we'll have a little spin, of, we're better we'll have a spin <laughs> of the wheel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, not who, me. Not me either. I got first. Mike, you, this is, you won this I week. I got first. Yep. yep. First time for everything. And uh, so fantasy face-off tomorrow, more matchups, some news. I mean, we got injuries that we are watching. In fact, Damian Pierce did not practice yet again. No. Uh -oh. So Devin Singletary could have a huge opportunity this week. I'm wondering if there's a chance since Mike won and I lost, and last week he said, I'm going to remember this. Am I getting mummy face tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just, just, it's just do it right, man. No, it's actually, it's just duct tape over your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was... Uh, I call it the hostage. <laughs> last week, last week, Mike's nose was in a, an ajar position I'm, for I'm a long it, period yeah, of time. It was, it was three or four days. It's back now. Yeah. It's, it's come back. It, it's to been set. Straight. No, yeah. it's it's good. It it, it should be it should be fun times for all. All right. All right. And uh, check out our Discord community over at ballersdiscord.com. Get involved there. The community, uh, if you want to join the Foot Clan, is jointhefoot.com. That is going to do it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in, you beautiful people. Thank you, Deucers Alley. Thank you, Judge Al, the Rap Scallion. we got to dress you up next year. The people were mad. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.